podcast. We are here to talk about watches, time, and how to spend it. My name is Andy Green, and with me is... Felix the King Schultz. I don't know why I went with a wrestling intro there. And, and, and Felix, I think... Yeah, I thought you could have been like the kid, your cowboy name. Yeah, the king. I don't know where that came from. Maybe I was thinking of, of Rolex. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's trying to start a new thing. Speedway, um, speedway, speedway. But speaking of new things, Felix. Oh, nice segue, Andy. Speaking of new things, we've hit that point in, you know, like the last 12 months sure. where we've seen a consistent batch of strong new releases. Yeah, man. Uh, so today's episode, we're just going to talk about all the new watches that have come out mm. and kind of quick to medium to long takes no on guests, each of them. No watch matchmaker, just 100% new product dropping. Uh, but before we do that, Felix, what has been happening with you? Do you know what I had for, uh, I guess, lunch the other day? Knowing you, it's probably some sort of like toast. <laughs> no, it was pancakes. <laughs> do you know why I had pancakes for lunch pancakes? the other day? Oh, did you? Yeah, huh? Because I, I wore, I wore my me. OTX first product, Hands as Fat Stacks t-shirt the other day for the first time. Uh, my son was particularly taken with the pancakes and he, he was just going, I want pancakes. Inspiring this apparel. I didn't see a, a T-shirt order come through for young Leon. Is he not supportive? We, we don't make them in kid sizes, Andy. Like way to, way to point out a flaw in our own production <laughs> methods. He could, he could rock a, a small, he'd, he'd look all right. I mean, right? yeah, like a little, little sort of cinch the waist. Oversized. Yeah. Uh, no, no, he was the arms he off. was very taken by the pancakes. I think he likes them more than the Love crocodile, it. but remains to be seen. Okay, okay, well, we'll see if we can win him over. What do you uh, What do you think of the tea? It's comfortable. Oh, they're very comfortable. I'm, I'm wearing the the black Primo Gelato today. Do we have any left, or are they all sold yet? Mm. No, we still have a little bit of stock. There's a there's a few few of each size down at First Product if you're in Melbourne, and of course Nick uh, has them on his website as well. First Product that's First Product with a one dot com dot au, uh, and it should just come up, or you can type OT into that search box. I will but link. We should probably there link are a few left. I think, we've got well. a, I think we've got it. Yeah, yeah. Be, this, there'll be a lot of links in this episode, so yeah, people well, will love it. I've already uh, had yeah, it I've been wearing them all week. I just grab fantastic. Mm. Uh, do you want to know what I've been up to? Not really, but you in addition to anyway. wearing uh, my OT merch, uh, I've been uh, I've been doing a week on the wrist yeah, with a, uh, a watch I wouldn't have uh, normally chosen. What is it? Yeah, um, again, news. Uh, it's, it's been around for a little while. It's a it's a Piaget Altiplano, Ooh. but it's the uh, it's obviously the ultra thin, ultra thin. Sorry, with the meteorite dial Ooh. in eighteen carat rose gold. Nice, nice. So. It's one of my favorite Altiplanos, actually, the Meteorite. Yeah, it's always cool seeing dials made out of Meteorite. And it's one of those dial materials that you think, oh, you know, you see them around. But when you go looking for Meteorite dials, there's not that many. No, I can think of a handful it's off an the top of my choice. head. It's a hard material to work mm, with. Mm. Do you know what I'm thinking of here with the Altiplano? Uh, thinking back to our episode from last year with Charlie Borman, he rode through the Altiplano. Hmm. Yeah, it's the high plateau hmm. of South America. Wearing a Bremont, unfortunately, but yeah, uh, well, I'm wearing a Bremont. Yeah, can't think of oh. too many. You do, mm-hmm. yeah. Can't think of too many uh, meteorite dials. And as I kind of have been researching more into this uh, this model and sort of the the dial choice uh, and the materials used, it's quite a hard material to to play around with. And it's it's impressive considering that you know I think the the whole watch is just over six millimeters like thick. Uh, and the movement's like three millimeters even. So that's already complicated. And then you add in this really kind of annoying material to work with. It's it's pretty cool. It's an interesting package. But I'm not sure if the review is going to be done in time for this. If it's not, I'll link up the review that you did on it in 2019 <laughs> instead. <laughs> uh, research, huh? Um, hey, uh, how are you finding that? No, this is sort based. of, uh, you know, you can you can... Give us some spoilers here. How are you finding wearing mm. such a thin watch compared to your normal thick boys? Look, I've been down, you know, shrinking the sizes. Honey, I shrunk my watches, but um, it's okay. It's okay. It, it's 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 forty millimeters, but there's basically no lug, so it does sit uh, pretty close to the wrist. It is, yeah, it is on the delicate side of things, but I kind of like that it's a little bit smaller and a little bit closer to the wrist because it is sort of, you know, quite an expensive watch. It sort of retails for just over 43000 I think, Australian dollars. So it's not 
you know, it's not a cheap watch to be banging around into things. So, so I prefer that it's discreet and also, you know, shirt cuffs that, that go straight under. So it's, it's not too bad. This week's episode is brought to you by Tag Heuer, who have launched a new partnership with Porsche. And today we're going to have a chat about the two versions of the watch that they've released to kick off this collaboration. The watch, well, the Tag Heuer Carrera Porsche Chronograph Special Edition. Absolutely, Andy. We're talking about a 44mm Carrera in a steel case on either a H-Link bracelet or a Porsche-inspired leather strap. The dial is really interesting. It's asphalt grey with some awesome texture, black counters, red highlights, applied minute markers, and a subtle date at six. There's a black ceramic tachometer bezel with Porsche in red text and numerous other red highlights, because black, red, and grey are Porsche colours. The movement is the the top-of-the-line Hoyer 02, which gives you 80 hours of power reserve, and the road up, it's shaped like a Porsche steering wheel. Absolutely love that dial. It's worth noting that all the text is actually Porsche fonts and that they've gone with applied minute markers rather than hours for a more of a speedometer feel, which is totally on brand given the partnership. Andy, you've had this on the wrist for a bit now. What do you think? First things first, Felix, 44mm is a big watch. So I've been drawn to the leather strap model. It has four lines of grey stitching, which is inspired by the Porsche's interior. Really though, this watch is all about that dial. The texture, which is a first for Tag Heuer, is something else. And it's really dynamic when you're out and about, you know, especially in the sun. The black and red are nicely balanced too, and the whole package feels modern and sporty. I really like the movement. The Hoyer O2 is a great chronograph, which, you know, is visible through that clear case back. Of course, the rotor is very cool, as is the fact that it's signed by Tag Heuer and Porsche. All up, this is a solid release that fans of both brands can really get behind. Agree 100%, Andy. The partnership makes sense. Hoyer and Porsche both had a presence at the Carrera Panamericana road race in the 50s that inspired the Carrera name for Hoyer and later the Porsche Carrera. There's just so much shared history between the brands and a shared future too, as Tag Hoyer sponsors the Porsche Formula E team. I just can't wait to see where they take it from here. Nor can I, Felix. So, in terms of pricing, the Tag Heuer Carrera Porsche Chronograph Special Edition is priced at $8,450 on leather, and on the steel bracelet, it's $8,750 Australian dollars. Now, it's not a limited edition, as we said, but it does come in some special co-branded packaging. To discover more about the partnership between Tag Heuer and Porsche, as well as the new Tag Heuer Carrera Porsche Chronograph, Head to tagheuer.com slash Porsche or your local Tag Heuer boutique. Alrighty, Felix, buckle up. It's time to get back to the show. All right. Watch news. All right, we're back, Felix. What is the, uh, what's the first bit of news to tick off the list? Well, I thought we could kick off with, uh, just to keep things interesting and keep people mm-hmm. on their toes, not a new watch, but rather a lawsuit. Uh oh. Uh oh. Spaghettios. Who's, who's been misbehaving? Uh, well, that's a, a matter for the courts. Um, but there are some. No comment. There are some suits up uh, accusing a Chicago based Rolex dealer of mm-hmm. selling watches outside their agreement, basically to the grey market. Wow. We'll link up some some good uh, pieces. There's a escapement thing that breaks it down pretty neatly. It works out well because he's a lawyer in his day job. And Watch Pro does a good sort of industry perspective of why it might not be as clear cut as it appears. But Andy, have you been following this? I have a little bit. Uh, it, it's been it's been quite interesting. So former employee sort of is saying they they were fired for not wanting to partake, and then they've sort of gone after the the authorized dealer uh, under a number of different um, I guess violations, which is you know quite interesting because it brings in Rico, which our Sons of Anarchy fan- fans will uh, will know exactly what Rico stands for. Yeah, um, uh, I can't remember. That's how they that's how they deal. go after the Sons. Organized crime. Yeah, it's, isn't a big, it? it's a very big deal, uh, and it seems to be taken seriously. But you know, this is sort of the rumor that is always kicking around forever that you know authorized dealers never have any stock because they're sort of selling it to their cousin's brother. To then you know list on Chrono Twenty Four or whatever, ship them out of. I think this the thing is shipping them out of country. That's the. Mm. I think that's what they're probably hoping to get them on because, the sort of as far as I got it, the the allegations were that, um, one of the sales staff would go into a room that was not, you know, no one else was in there, and they'd then sell you know twenty watches in a go. Um, yeah, including presumably one Daytona. <laughs> 
Yeah, and just sort of, I mean, I've heard about this sort of thing a long time ago, you know, not in recent times when watches have been so crazy, but, you know, 10, 15 years ago, I definitely have heard of sort of people that, you know, might have worked at authorised dealers that, you know, said that this sort of thing happened, but it's been a long-standing rumour and I find it really hard to believe that the risk is ever worth losing, you know, the licence to print money that is mm. a Rolex dealership unless there's, you know, unprecedented greed involved. Uh, or, or other so. problems, like who knows, like maybe, you know, but um, the thing I found, this is why I think the Watch Pro article is interesting because he writes it, so uh, Rob Corder, who owns Watch Pro, comes from a very industry perspective mm. and he talks about it from a, an AD point of view. So he's like, these guys have got a 40-year relationship with Rolex. Yeah. Um, and basically he puts it down to a sort of air quotes, bad sales associate or like maybe a mm. bad manager who's doing mm. stuff um, off the books and uh, has jeopardized not only, you know, the, obviously lawsuits and stuff, but this AD's relationship with Rolex. And I think putting it into perspective, the paranoia that dealers sort of have in terms of who they sell to is partially because of, the possible repercussions like this like yeah 100 i just don't see it as worth it i mean look we could be wrong but i can't see it happening you know the dealer setting out to do it if if, if they've got a bad apple um, and, and the that, other thing was um, team, maybe it was, i think it was happened during covid maybe yeah okay so like if so when you retail shop when they were allowed to ship stuff out yeah i mean they yeah that was one of the unusual things as as part of sort of covid19 especially sort of in the, the heat of it sort of during 2020 was that ad's were allowed to you know, deliver watches to clients. So, well, I don't know about America. Maybe it was different there. Um, yeah, potentially, potentially. Uh, that's going to going to be really interesting to watch, and yeah, we'll see what happens there. What else, Felix? What else? Well, um, spoiler alert for our upcoming episode, mm -hmm. uh, which well, actually, I'm not going to spoil it, but a little a little bit of a Hadinky link, a Hadinky linky. Um, Hadinky have released and sold out of already another collaboration with Tag Hoya. The uh, I'm not sure what the model is called technically, but the Dado 45, um, which is a, it's a very nice recreation of one of the uh, sort of pioneering um, uh, Carreras, and it's a very yep. distinctive 1960s. model. 1960s. Yeah, it's got the single 45 minute register on the right hand side with a date at nine o'clock, which was unusual, and they just did a really uh -huh. nice job um, making it. What was yeah, it's got that glass box, glass box case that everyone uh, everyone loves. Limited to two hundred and fifty pieces, so obviously sold out very very quickly. Seventy two hundred and fifty US dollars, which is quite a lot for a for a Carrera. But also, these guys aren't you know these guys aren't silly. Hodinki and Tag Heuer aren't silly. They're going to do two hundred and fifty units. It's going to cost them more to do that, and they know that the demand's going to be crazy. I mean, you know, and actually it, that cost they could. Pause because that well, maybe they just turn the dial upside down. Yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking like, is there more? Custom Doesn't matter. Work? Like the demand. Like there's a, this is the just a case of like market. You know, there's yeah. supply, limited supply. There's demand. These are going to sell for fifteen thousand US on eBay and Chrono Twenty Four tomorrow. If you know, this is what everyone says. If Rolex, you know, to go back to Rolex, if Rolex charged thirty thousand dollars for a Daytona at retail, people would still pay that because mm. that's sort of what the market price is. So. Why can't the brands that actually put in the the work to making these things, you know, take a take a bigger cut if it if it's if it's there to be had? I don't really have an issue with it, but it sure looks cool. And you know, sold out in other, minutes, I think. Minutes. Well, so Hodinki had an allocation, and then I think that Select Tag Heuer regions yes. also had them online, so you could. I believe U.S. probably U.S. only, maybe Japan yeah, as probably. well. Yeah, actually, I think it was U.S. and Japan mm. because that's but where Hodinki really cool. have offices, I suppose. 39 millimeters, you know, vintage Hoya logo, of course. It's got the, the sign crown as well. Um, the matte black dial looks really, really nice. So, two, yeah, good luck. Two things I thought, I thought about one. this. Um, one was interesting that uh, Caliber 11, our good friend Dave, mm -hmm. and uh, Jeff Stein from On The Dash broke it an hour before Hodinki, which is obviously deliberate. Like that's a, you know, they got... they got a sort of a digital exclusive for an hour, which I think is a nice sort of tribute to their... A Hoya enthusiast um, group. And mm -hmm. the, the other mm -hmm. thing I found interesting about it was I saw a little bit of chatter, given that people yeah. people like to hate her dinky, going, cool. 
why what? is there only one sub register? Why is the date on the wrong side? You guys really yeah. stuffed this up. I mean, they didn't, as <laughs> proven by the <laughs> instant uh, instant success. But or the or the very faithful version of the watch they based it off. So maybe Jack Hoyer yeah. stuffed it up. Go. Maybe maybe people know better. Yeah, I think. All that. right. What's next, Andy? I- I see you've linked up some Grand Seiko, and oh, this is a very handy link you've provided. Introducing four new Grand Seiko Elegance GMTs inspired by 24 Seasons. That's uh, this is a Revolution a article <laughs> uh, by Felix Schultz. Oh, oh. You write for Revolution. I do. Okay. I like to toot my own horn sometimes. Um, this is a very lovely article. I'm sure this will get linked up. Sure, Talk sure. Talk me through these four models, Felix. Well, they I mean, nice. before that, so last week, a lot of my week was taken up with Zooms. A little ah. bit of evening zooming. Um, and it's amazing how far we've come in a year. So last year mm-hmm. was like, you know, one sort of harassed looking sales assist, you know, marketing person yeah. in front of a regular Zoom. And now it's like virtual sets. There's little it's actual music. sets. We did one the other week that was an actual set. Yeah, like it's a, all, I don't know. And it's, and I think, Airstream or something. Yeah, we've got we've to gotta find the fine line because I must yeah. admit like, the Seiko and Grand Seiko one was good, but there was like at least half an hour at the start going through the history of the brand. Mm. And I don't know, can they can they perhaps stream these into people that have done this before um, and people that maybe are new to the brand? Because if I'm using it, the, the sort of the press presentations at Basel as a, yep. uh, a parallel, which of these are basically the same sort of format, they would introduce all their watches in two big sort of presentations, one after the other. Um, sure. They didn't give you the history of Seiko, you know, unless it was relevant. But uh, it was very, very good. It was well put together. You got to see a whole lot of watches, and they even released more that they sort of didn't discuss. In they the, did heaps. Yeah, I mean, well, it's a, it's an animal drop. This is like their... The 2021 uh-huh. collection. Yeah, very cool. So check them all out. But I thought for Grand Seiko, the ones that sort of spoke to me were these new GMTs that they're based on seasons. Oh, man. Now, you, you might think, Andy, that because there's four of them, they're basing them off the four seasons. Um, but that's not true. In Japan, they've, they've got these things called seki, which are there's 24 of them. So there's six per season, and they're like even smaller their phases. Yeah, nature-based changes within a, a bigger season, which I think is – it's nice. Um, the cynic in me says, so we're going to get 24 of these um, <laughs> <laughs> over the next six years or whatever. Um, but it is – and sort of doing my research for that Revolution article, Grand Seiko really do have – like nature is the – the yeah. dominant theme in their dials, you know, like there's the Malawate, there's the Snowflake, everything else, you know. Okay, so there's the the four the four we've got. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first one is the Shun Shunban S B G J two five one, inspired by the spring equinox. This is a green dial. Yeah, it I mean. Is... Very nice. Yeah, well, I mean, we, can, we don't have to go through all the references because it's, you know. I want to talk about this one for a minute because okay. this, oh, this is speaking I've, to I've, me. I forgot. <laughs> no, this is really nice. The texture on this dial looks incredible. And I like the GMT hand. Is that rose gold, Felix? Yes, yes, it is. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, so there's two there's, there's two autos and two spring drives and they're in uh-huh. the sort of the elegance uh, collection. So it's a slightly, I think it's a, a fairly new case for the for the autos at least. Two five one. I'm just going to Google the price. About ten k. Money. Seven thousand six hundred euros. What's that in Aussie dollars? I'm just going to convert that for myself. Just keep keep the show going while I work out. It's about ten k. No, it's about twelve. Okay, all right. Yeah. So that's the other thing I find interesting. They're getting up there in price. But one thing they mentioned at the start of the the Zoom, and I think it's a good thing to sort of to to leave with on on Grand Seiko is apparently in the US they are number four. Uh, in terms of performing brands in the sure. five thousand to ten thousand dollar category, US right? Yeah. So Rolex, Amiga are somewhere up there. Who Tudor? who's at number three? Like maybe Tudor, maybe Breitling. You know, maybe Tag Heuer. More for US that might be. And then Grand Seiko. That's huge. Like, it's a good category for them. And it, but it's like, can you imagine that situation five years ago? Nah. No. They're pushing like they are. 
they're going hardcore in terms of would, pushing up market. So, would you say that the seasons are changing? Oh. Mm-hmm. There's a new a new breeze uh, <laughs> turning over a new leaf. Um, I really like these. I think these these doves are very very nice. Mm-hmm. All I like them the are black one. Really the nice. black one looks cool. The black one with the um, yeah with the I don't know if it's rose gold or gold. I'll have to give it a deeper read later on, but. These these dolls are all lovely. Yeah, I mean it's you know it's Grand Seiko. They're all lovely. Like there's, I don't think oh, you know, there's not a lot you can complain about them except perhaps case proportions and the lack of fine adjustment on the bracelet. Which what do you what what with the case proportions? Well, I mean like? more broadly, Grand Seiko have sort of historically had pretty thick cases, and they've got new yep. movements that they released last year that are thinner. So I think yep. they're working on that. But I mean. All their products. 14, okay, fourteen, yeah, fourteen mil tall. Okay, that is pretty. Yeah, okay. All right, gotcha. Cool. Do you want, All right. Do you want to talk about right. Seiko for a second? Let's uh, let's dip into Seiko. What's going on with Seiko? Again, a lot. They've got um. Uh, last year they released a sort of a new series called the Sharp Sharp Edge, and they've got a new Sharp Sharp Edge GMT that looks pretty cool. Um, again, I've sort of only top lined that. Um, uh huh. That's one to check out. But the ones that sort of are heroing uh, their their collection are the Alpinists. You familiar with the Alpinist? I am. I am. I haven't been a, a massive fan, but I see there's one that's just been released that might. Well, these look speak very different. Louder. Yeah, I'm so, I can see. They don't have that little extra crown. They don't have that little, mm. you know, that that sort of traditional green dial. So they've done as they want to do. They've got the 1959 recreation, which is a essentially almost a one-to-one facsimile of the original Alpinist model um, that looks really cool. Like it's their sort of for, first sports watch. Um, and it's got big triangular markers, uh, you know, it looks like a, a 50s sports watch, you know. Uh, but the real takeaway here is comes on a Bund strap. The Bund. Okay, so we can assume that Jason Heaton has... Uh, he's ordered 10. He's, taken some, he's got some sort of royalties coming out of this. <laughs> Okay, uh, so it's it used. To, so the original said Alpinist on the dial, and this is automatic. That's interesting. But otherwise, it is very close. And there's a lot of detail on uh, on the bun strap. Yeah, as well. nice stitching, huh? And the date window is at what's that? Four thirty. Classic. Love a four thirty date. The so that's going to be um, limited to I'm, I'm guessing one thousand nine hundred fifty nine pieces, and it's going to be fairly expensive. They've also okay. done what they do best, and they've reinterpreted that design for the modern era and released a bunch of reinterpretation watches, I think three. What do you think uh-huh. of those? Not as nice as that limited edition reissue. Okay. I, uh, no, I like the um, – there's like a grey dial that's quite nice. I, I get really quite the, – the, I like them a lot more than the previous ones. No, nah, okay, I do. I like – and the, even the green's much nicer. The other – I don't know if it was the, the hands. It had like a weird – a weird set of hands on the previous one that just mm, never, yeah, str- ne- cathedral I never sort got. Of hand things. Yeah, too, this this is a much cleaner sort of strong watch. explorer vibes. Yeah, okay, so it's going to be and and they've put that detail that you saw on the hands into the um the sort of twelve o'clock, six o'clock, yeah, and nine o'clock mark. Triangle, oh, fascinating thing. De- okay, okay, all available in August of twenty twenty one. All right, well that that button strap's going to. Like they're going to fly. Did you get any indication of pricing? It won't be much, right? Like, what about 1500 um, bucks? I'm sure I did, but not off the top of my head. Look, I reckon these, so the recreations I reckon will be in Aussie probably around the 1 to 2K mark. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Reasonable. Yeah. So that's it. They've got the 70 hour power reserve, 6R35 caliber. Massive. Um, yeah. I think that and it's cool. a little bit thinner. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. It's, cool. And it's a sort of, it sits between, like, there's still 200 meter water resistance, but they're quite yep. dressy looking pieces. Very. So, clear cash back as well. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Huh. So, interesting. Yeah. That's that's what right. I, I did with Seiko and Grand Seiko. I'm ex, you know, excited to, you know, see what they look like IRL. TBA. Seiko boys. Seiko boys for uh, life. We might have to, uh, yeah, we might. Well, well, I'm going to need to see. I've, you've got to get a Seiko, Andy. You've, you've never had one, I think. It, I need a Grand Seiko too. So after, yeah. Right? <laughs> no, maybe 2021 goals. Uh, okay, so what, you sent me something the other day. A little. A what little, did I send you? You sent me a little trio. Uh-huh. What were they? I was hoping you'd remember. Let's say that. I sent you a lot of things. Zever Deutsch. Nomos. 
see. Yeah. Ah, the new limited edition club in three different colors. Uh-huh. Yeah. So we have Onyx. That's Navy. Black. No, it's Onyx. <laughs> Navy and Olive. I like uh, the Olive. All right. Olive dibs. So th- You're, you always take the green dial. This one, it's mine. Okay, so the Onyx is very, uh, very, very sleek black dial. If if Felix wants to call that, uh, call it black. Uh, so these are sort of priced between three and a half to four thousand Aussie. Um, available online. I'm just going to click on the Onyx. It looks like the Onyx is is sold out online. So I'm guessing the reception to these was quite strong. Well, they're also only 175 pieces per watch. I say well, only. That's, that's I mean, you know, these have been out a week, but that's pretty good sales figures for a week. Um, Almost, man. Strap, sports bracelet. Looks good on the strap. Okay. Uh, and these Damn. are celebrating the 175 years of watchmaking in Glass Shooter. So, Just keeping the party going, aren't we? Yeah. I mean, we, we talked about the Lambda last year, and these are these are more my speed, to be honest, as a proud club automat owner myself. For the money, like, you just – it's so hard to beat. It is so hard to beat when you look at what you get. Uh, 200 meters water resistance, 40 mils, under a centimeter thick, automatic movement. It's just killer, isn't it? That, you get the case product. back. I mean, all – In-house movement. All – Killer no thriller, filler. Mm, it has the same movement as the Lambda as well. I think the DUW five zero zero one. So the Lambdas are manually wound, and these are autos. These are their um sort of newer main. Ah, uh, okay, five zero zero something else for the Lambda. Uh cool. Yeah, Very I'm glad cool. you sent that through. That was a, a nice spot, and uh, well done, Team Nomos. I've, yeah. Can I also say I've linked another revolution. Dot watch article. <laughs> this is just to get traffic up on your articles. So well, yeah. yeah, look, there's some KPIs. Nice I've just got yeah. <laughs> performance reviews coming up again. We don't know what's happening with Felix's articles. It's, it's getting a lot, of, a lot of spikes traffic. on, I don't know. Um, People looking to buy T-shirts perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I've also renamed all the links, like everything just d- directs through my <laughs> articles. Put custom UTM tracking just to really pull the receipts out later. No, Brightling. So Brightling in a nice little... Aussie Link have done a collab with uh, Deus. Deus, the ex machina. Yeah, the the bike slash lifestyle brand. Um, mm-hmm. I you know, I always thought. Oh, you wrote this article as well. Yeah, oh, yeah. fantastic. I did link to my own <laughs> stuff. I okay, so I have a story with this watch. One of um one of my friends got kind of sent a picture about a week before it came out. Oh, yeah. By his, his dealer, because you know how dealers get you know the heads up on this stuff. Hang on, hang on. No, let's let's just say that this was uh, a friend in another country, and we don't know anyone who would possibly be doing this. No, no. Uh, anyway, let's not get Brad in trouble. <laughs> and he shows me his. What do you think? And I said, ah, mm, nah. <laughs> and then that was just based off you know like a little screenshot on a phone. Sure. But then I saw the press pics and the rest of it. And I think I gave bad advice, which is, you know, rare for me. But I apologize to my international friend. Uh, what was his name, Brad? No, the Bradley. dealer was Brad. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, Brad's been fired. Um, Brad's been fired. Uh, but this is this is pretty cool. This is pretty. Well, I pretty think cool. it's interesting. And, uh, I, but so for me, like, I think it's 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 a smart play by Breitling, mm. been, who like making smart plays in the the partnership yeah. space. Of course. So anyone that doesn't know who Deus is, they yeah. are, they started off customizing bikes. Um, yeah. And then they rapidly moved into apparel and everything else. And it's sort of like, yeah, um, the press release is a little bit on the nose talking about, you know, the spirit of freedom and digital nomads. But it's that vibe. Like if you're a, if you're a dude that, that does a little bit of CrossFit and, you know, wishes he could ride a bike, um this is the brand you have. Also, it must be said, people that do ride bikes and do, you know, CrossFit and stuff. I'm just going to interrupt you because I've literally just checked my phone. And do you know who's emailed me back? Uh, George Kern? Nah, Carby Tuckwell, the co-founder of Deus. Oh, nice. Uh, so he's going to come on the pod to tell us all about it. So maybe we don't spend too much time. <laughs> is that legit? Yeah, no, legitimately just looked down at a, an email that came through. Um, Shit. He's been mates with Ted Gishu, Link Up Ted Gishu. Yeah. He saw sure. uh, he saw OT when um Mate, when let's, Ted just, it. let's let's retract all that stuff I was talking about, middle aged guys buying custom bikes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's very cool. It's a very tasteful take on um, you know, a, a collab often when fashion, 
you know, or lifestyle brands kind of go into the watch world, it, it doesn't work, especially automotive. You get really nervous, mm. especially around car manufacturers. This works. This has got some nice creamy colors, you know, oranges, reds. Yeah, re- really the retro. Subdials. Really, yeah. And it fits yeah. in. Yeah. The, you, yeah. the main thing Yummy. for me that it works though is the, the logo. The day yep. the Deus logo looks, it's like that classic sort of old shield style logo. Mm. It looks like a watch brand re- logo. Yeah, I really like this, you know, the current iteration of the top time time as well uh, from Breitling. I think they've actually got a, a, a pretty cool watch for the money um, and I wouldn't hate owning one, you know. I wouldn't I wouldn't hate owning one. Maybe this is a question we can ask um, old mate. But yeah. So there's now a Deus squad. We yeah. like there's like surfers and a biker and like you a want resto guy. It? No, no, no. I want an OT squad. Yes. How do we make that happen? I think we need to get it. Maybe maybe that's a clubhouse play. Maybe we get a we create a room OT squad on clubhouse. Just, in, just invite George in, and then we get a mm. we get a squad. Is that how it works? Are you, or are you thinking like motorcycle gang sort of squad? No, like I want a, a Brightling squad. Hog style. I want a Brightling squad. <laughs> just we'll get we'll get Harley Davidsons, and we can ride around listening to um, podcasts. Nice, yeah, like those those big um those big Harleys what? that have radios in them that with speakers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, wild hogs, mate. Wild hogs. Midlife crisis coming right yes, up. Yes, I want to be Bully Match Macy. What's next, Andy? <laughs> uh, oh, plenty, there's plenty more. Um, okay, so I don't know about this, but apparently there's a bunch of new Mont Blanc watches that you've seen under embargo that you won't tell me about. Yeah, well, uh, that's correct. Yeah, so that was the other other little Zoom sesh I had the other day. That mm-hmm. was that was lovely. It's part cool. of their sort of media thing. Uh, you know, there was a, a nice set. There was a little leather sort of lounge. It was in the, uh-huh. the Minerva facility. And we also got introduced to, and this is a little bit, um, as they say, inside baseball, yep. the new head of watches. Well, I'm sure oh. people were introduced to him before, but I was. Yeah. <laughs> um, used to be uh, Davide Serrato, ex Tudor, um, yep. who's, who's gone elsewhere now. I'm not sure where. Now we have Laurent Lacamp who is watch space for a while. He actually founded a pretty niche brand called Cyrus, which, yes. which is sort of like high-end weird mechanical stuff. And he's also mm-hmm. a bit of a, a luxury marketing academic. He was, okay. you know, he, he talked the talk. I was, I was convinced there's some interesting yep. stuff coming down the pipeline. But the one that we can talk about now is yep. the 1858 Monopusher Chronograph Origins Limited Edition 100. Guess how many pieces are in the limited edition, Andy? 99. No, 100. Ah. It was either that or 1850. 100. <laughs> but the price point on this one, because it's one of those big Minerva pocket watch movements, is a little bit more exy. Um, how exy? Oh, I think about 30K US. Yep. Okay, uh, so and again, it's sort of based on one of the, you know, it's based on one of the original um, Minerva designs, and it's 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 a playbook that Mont Blanc has established yeah. pretty well over the last few years, and you can sort of even without telling you what to expect, you can guess there's going to be expensive line line extension, more yeah, affordable, yeah. you know, a couple of new variants, um, yeah, okay, you know, so this is it's it's a solid watch, and I think their Minerva stuff. Is it stands up there, but it's it's uh, it's an interesting sort of duality that the brand has at the moment, and I wonder how mm. that's going to go in the long run. The and it's, so it's got that Hunter case back, yep, which is yeah, that's very nice. It's, these these Minerva movements are stunning, and you don't really get it until you see one in person. And the problem is. You know, they do one of these releases every year of 100 units. Australia will get one or two. Literally, I think I got to wear one of the green dial uh, mono pushes. Oh, the steel ones? The steel one with the green dial yeah, nice. uh, last, oh, that was 2019. And that was the one piece that came here, which was brought in sort of for press. But otherwise, markets really only get it to sell to clients. So you don't get the chance to see this stuff, which is, I think, a bit of a shame because, as you were saying, they do leverage it so hard. But honestly, um, also, like, there must be a hundred guys out there that are massive Minerva fans that just yeah. keep buying this. Yeah, and you can see why. Like, you look and you go, "Yeah, this is beautiful. The movement is lovely to look at. They're rare and they're nice, and you know, 
it is what it is, I guess. But it's yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the broader Mont Blanc watch department. Yeah, over, especially with this with with some new leadership going on. Let's see. Or... Make or break, I reckon. Make or break. All yeah. right. I mean, I mean, there's still the CEO, so I mean, it's it's not yeah. quite that that you know hyperbolic, but yeah, could be seeing some new directions. Finally, Andy, well, we've got one other watch to talk about. I think. Or do we have more? Uh, what is it? I'm going to, I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to give you three hints. Okay. Quick change strap. Yep. Yacht. Uh-huh. Wasn't worn on the moon. Wasn't, wasn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you're talking about the Omega Seamaster Diver 300 America's Cup chronograph. <laughs> That's, it's like we had this prepared, Andy. That was a very accurate guess. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Amiga have released their second uh, special edition for the America's Cup, which is held in Auckland, so close, yet so far mm-hmm. away. Um, yeah. And it's quite cool. Why is it cool? Well, it's, it's A, it's you know a Chrono Seamaster, which yeah, they're fairly cool, but that's not what excites me about this watch, Andy Green. There's two things that excite me about this watch that aren't related to the visual aesthetics. Okay. Quick, change, one is. quick change strap, which is Bingo. huge. And it looks yeah. like a proper one as well, not like a, um, you know, someone's just bought a random spring bar and a bit of plastic that you chuck in the yep. strap and, you know, you call Squeeze it. together. Yeah, yeah. It's, it looks like a more proprietary sort of system. Uh-huh. And they've also got a fancy little sort of slide that might make you think it's a minute repeat up, but it's not. It actually locks a chronograph so you can't accidentally push the buttons, which is kind of simple. They love locking things, don't they? Niad lock. Trip. Crown lock on the well, I mean, off. if you look at that other classic chronograph, the Daytona, mm. which you know you you and I both love, it's a watch with screw down pushes, which I've always found very irritating. Mm. I understand the purpose of it, like yep. you don't want to. If you're building an action chronograph, I think actually no, with the screw down pushes, you can still push the chrono, can't you? Yeah, you just have to unscrew it. Okay, so it locks uh, the pushes. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, makes it very um, useless. Yeah, <laughs> but this is a much more user-friendly version of the same thing. It's it's a good blend. This watch, it's quite full-on to look at. You know, there's a lot of blue, the sort of the countdown indicator. I guess that's the yacht yacht timer on the on at three o'clock. I should say is pretty. It's pretty full-on in terms of design. You know, there's blue. There's a blue and a red chronograph pusher as well. Obviously, there's the you know, there's four crowns plus this slide lock. It works, but it, it feels like a practical tool watch. Like, I don't know that, like, your everyday enthusiast is going to rock this and and kind of enjoy it to the full uh, extent that you would if you're actually into into yachting or, or getting out there yeah. on the seas. For, for me, though, this is a classic case of you see something on the watch like, you know, the new technology is debuted yep. on the platinum piece and then you wait three years and you get it on the main steel. But I think it's a package. As yeah. a package, it works. Like you look at it and go, yeah, that's a serious... Is that a know, different it's... case silhouette as well? And yeah, it is with yeah. a crown lock. Yeah. Yeah, slightly because it's got that the the lock there, that, but it's been sort of integrated into the overall design. Well, no, I mean sort of, of on, the, on the, the crown side, like it looks very... Uh, I'm doing a visual symbol of like a wavy scallop shape that you clearly can't see thanks to this podcast. Uh, waves, but that's that's always been the Seamaster, the wavy, um, the wavy details. Mm. Look, it's yeah, it, it's a it's a business watch. Like this is this this watch means business. Yacht business. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, boats and watches. Uh, very cool. That, that's this is a good batch of new watches that have all sort of come out the last, I guess, two weeks. So and I think we'll probably do, are heating up. We'll do another one of these in the next, uh, probably like, maybe like a month or so because there's got to be another batch. Monthly? I don't know. Guys, let us know. Should we do this monthly? Is monthly too often? Is it not enough? Should we do it as it comes up? Well, I think Maybe. this is like we've got like watches and wonders coming up, so we're gonna have to mm. have to. What do we call this other than news? Like, what do we? We need a cool name for it. Ten new watches for ten <laughs> guys. That'll blow your socks off that you didn't know existed. Seven weird facts you never knew and about. And you won't them. believe the price. Jesus. Uh, let's not call it any of those things. Let's like go the opposite way. Go new episode, podcast 74, date News. February. New watches. Uh, well, Felix, mm. thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Tag Hoyer. Thanks, Tag Hoyer. Could have done it without you. 
thank you, Major Tom Media, for pulling our, sh- our show together. Thank you to everyone here. that follows us on Instagram, ot.podcast. Felix, if I wanted to email some news title suggestions or some new drops that you know Andy might not know about. Did you say new drops? New drops. Oh, yeah. Pop okay. the new drop. Okay, gotcha. Uh, OT the podcast at gmail.com. Please be aware our spam Boom. filter is very active. No nudes. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> if you've got any web proposals or uh, unclaimed estate money. Our um, SEO always needs optimizing. <laughs> yeah, our SEO needs optimizing. Help us rank on uh, on Google. We've won we an iPhone, Andy. I think we won 10, won 10 million dollars last time I checked. Okay. Fantastic. We'll see you guys next time. See you, Andy.